Howdy, I'm Captain Julian Gluck, go by Cosmo. I'm a B-52 pilot and flight commander in the 2nd Operations Support Squadron here at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. And I'm proud to show you my favorite aircraft, the B-52-8 Stratofortress, aka the Buff. Let's go on a journey and check it out. Now the B-52 was designed in the late 1940s and early 1950s by Boeing to replace the B-36 Peacemaker and the B-47 Stratagen. It went through a number of different design iterations. Were they going to go with straight wing, swept wing, propellers, turbojets, eventually settling on this design. There's been multiple models over the year, but this one, the current H model, featuring notably eight turbofan engines. These are Pratt & Whitney. TF-33's 17,000 pounds of thrust. Only airplane in the world with eight engines. And as you can see behind me, the B-52 is massive. 185 foot wingspan, 185,000 pounds empty weight, up to 488,000 pounds gross weight with fuel and weapons inside of it. As far as weapons, we can carry a wide variety of munitions. As we go past the engines here, you can see behind me the bomb bay, as well as the spot where you can have heavy stores adapter beams or pylons. Inside and on those carry 70,000 pounds of ordnance. Wide variety. I'm talking conventional air launch cruise missiles, nuclear cruise missiles, standoff munitions, sea mines, air launch decoys, cluster munitions, GPS aided inertial navigated bombs, laser guided bombs, leaflet canisters. This jet can carry it all. Over here, you can see on my right, this is a targeting pod. It's used for surveillance, reconnaissance, designating potential points of interest or targets, as well as for the laser guiding of certain weapons. Under this massive wingspan, we've got a redundancy of systems. We've got fuel there. On the extreme ends of the jet, you have your external fuel tanks. And as we go underneath it here, and you can see above, the B-52 doesn't have your standard ailerons like you would normally expect. Instead, it has spoilers or air brakes. And these are used not just to create drag to slow down the jet, but also to help on the longitudinal axis with rolling or turning. You can get a great view of them here as well. stabilizer and the massive vertical stabilizer on the B-52. In the back is the, what well, used to be the gun to the aircraft, the gunner section. On earlier models, the B-52 was a four-barrel machine gun that was on the back controlled by a member of the air crew. The air crew of the B-52 includes the aircraft commander and pilot, co-pilot, two weapon systems officers, so you do your navigation as well as uh, your weapons activity, an electronic warfare officer who's in charge of chaff, flare, and both electromagnetic defense, as well as situational awareness. We used to have an enlisted member who controlled the gun in the back, which on the H model was a 20 millimeter cannon, but that was uh, taken away in the early 1990s. The B-52 has an incredible history. It's one of the most famous aircraft, especially military aircraft in the world. You've seen it before in pop culture. There was a band named after a hairstyle, named after the B-52. You had the movie Dr. Strangelove, as well as plenty of other examples in fiction. But it's the non-fiction of the B-52 which is the most exciting. In the Cold War, through uh, operations like Chrome Dome, the B-52 was used with airborne missions to ensure that our adversaries knew the strength and the nuclear capability of uh, the American military. In Vietnam, through Rolling Thunder, Linebacker 2, B-52s were used in many bombing missions, as well as we've got Allied Force, Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, plenty of exercises in between. This particular B-52, 60008, is of personal significance to me and also one with a very interesting history. Every B-52 has a story. This one in 1994 with the Global Power 94-7 exercise flew over 20,000 miles and circumnavigated the globe. It was the first time a military aircraft had ever done a full circumnavigation and released weapons. It was to celebrate uh, the end of the Gulf War, flew all the way over Kuwait, dropped some bombs, and came back multiple air refuelings as it went across the world. It carried 27 500-pound bombs in the bomb bay, as well as 10-pound
pounds of brisket and a large lasagna. The crew's got to eat as well. As you see on the sign here, we've got some information. The nickname of this flagship of the Mighty Ape here is Lucky Lady 4. There are previous Lucky Ladies. You can also see in the nose arc, we've got the second bomb wing symbol, Libertatum Defendimus, Liberty We Defend. You see all those bombs in there on to the right of the triangle. Each of those bombs signifies a combat mission with a B-52 release weapons. And as I mentioned, the personal significance of my crew in operation in the Air was the first to have a combat mission releasing weapons in this aircraft. So we were able to the first bomb and eventually with the times 10 signifying 10 missions. Thank you very much for your time. It's Cosmo signing out. See ya!